Hey, this is Greg, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a picture pop out of a frame using Canva. So we'll walk through all the steps to help you lock in the process. I'll show you some tips for making sure your different images stay aligned. If you're a free user, I can show you a workaround you can use for removing the background. And then I'll show you a few examples to give you ideas of things you can do to really take this effect to the next level. And then if you really want to lock it in, I also have some free resources for you. So make sure you watch till the end. Okay, the key to creating a photo pop out effect like this where the photo pops out of the frames is really making use of frames in Canva and then having one image in the frame and another image popping out of the frame. So if you don't understand how to use frames in Canva, I'll link another video that I did on how to use frames in Canva, but you're also going to learn plenty just from watching this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to work the steps because what you're going to need is you're going to need a frame and then you're going to need multiple versions of your image. So the best way to learn this is just through example uh, and practice so let's work the steps just so you're really comfortable with the process I'll give you lots of tips along the way and then we'll lock in sort of those extras you can do to really make your design stand out so let's go to a blank screen right here and as I said you're gonna have something pop out of the frame so you can decide whether you want to find that photo first it might make sense uh, that you find the photo first because then you may have an idea of what sort of shape frame uh, is gonna work best so let me just come here under photos clear my search let's see if I can find that one photo uh, that we were just using in my recent searches here. So here it is right here. So let me just uh, find that here. Uh, and we're going to use this photo. Now, again, as I said before, you can use any shape frame you want, but you want to think about, you know, the shape of your subject that you're going to remove from the background. How are they going to fit in certain frames? And then what elements you might want to pop out of the frame. So we're just going to keep it simple and use circle frame. I see a circle frame right here, but you could also just search here for circle frame under the elements tab here in Canva. And this first option here is what we're going to use. So we're going to bring this frame in. Okay, so now we have a frame and we have the photo itself. Now, of course, if I try to drag it into the frame, as soon as I get over top of the frame, boom, it's going to snap, and snap into the frame. But before I do that, let me just go ahead and duplicate this. So I'll right click and choose the duplicate option. You could also use control D on your keyboard to do this. Uh, that would be Command D on Mac, but Control D on Windows. And now we have a second copy and I'll just place that other copy sort of out of the way for a second. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this main copy here and we're just gonna slide that into our frame. I'll collapse this so we can see a little bit better. And so now we have her within the frame here and we can resize, uh, get the circle about the size we want. But of course, now we're gonna want to adjust sort of how this photo is appearing within the circle because it's sort of mostly contained within the circle here. I wanna make it so she extends a little bit farther beyond this frame. And then that's where this second photo is gonna come into play because we're gonna use that so we have it so we can see both elements inside the frame and outside the frame, sort of the full the eye of the user so we get that photo pop out effect. Okay, so if you worked with frames before in Canva, you know that you have these uh, resize uh, handles here on your frame. So if you drag from the corner, you can resize that and it's gonna keep the proportion sort of width to height. Now, some frames will also have these side handles, which you can drag in. Of course, now it's squashing this down to an oval. So you have to be a little bit careful using those and make sure it is something you wanna do. I'm just gonna hit Control Z on my keyboard to undo that change and bring it back. because I wanna keep this as a perfect circle. Uh, but to actually get in and resize the photo within the frame, we need to enter crop mode. Now you can do that by coming under edit photo and then using this crop option here. And that will enter you into this dialog here. But I'm gonna exit out of that for a second and show you the keyboard shortcut, uh, well, I guess it's sort of a mouse shortcut uh, that I love to use just because it does save a tiny bit of time is just double click on it. So you double click on any frame, it's gonna immediately take you into that crop uh, mode here. Now, of course, it only saves a couple seconds, but it's still a couple seconds. It's just easy, so that's how I like to do it. And then once you're within here, uh, by default, it's sort of gonna stretch your photo to the bounds of the frame. So you can see how the top of the photo here uh, and the bottom of the photo sort of line up with the outer bounds of that circle. Uh, there still is extra space on the side, so I can slide it sideways. Uh, but I can't shrink it down, you know, beyond the uh, part of the circle since it has to at least stretch to the bounds of the circle. But what I can do then is scale it up so I can start to scale up. Now, when you're scaling up like this, if suddenly you start to go off the screen where you can see, you can also just come down here real quick, give you a little bit more space. Uh, so just so you can see what you're doing. And so I'm going to scale her up. And I'm going to reposition. So again, use the corner points to scale. And then when you see this uh, icon shift to this uh, sort of cursor where you have the four arrows, then that lets you know you can just click, hold, and drag and move it around to position it however you want. So I want it so that uh, she's sort of popping out of the frames uh, on the side, the top, and then also her drink over here. So let's just make it a little bit more on this side. 
uh, maybe something like that here. And again, you can always come back and adjust this later, but I think that's going to work pretty well. Now, anytime you've done this, you can click done, or you can just click anywhere on the outside area here beyond the bounds of your photo, and it's going to lock in that change. Now, I'll fit this back to screen now, just so we have a good view of what we're doing here. Uh, and I can also switch between the different modes I have here. Right now, I'm in this sort of uh, vertically scrolling mode, but I can also just do this if I want to go into thumbnail mode. And then you can see I have a bunch of other... Uh, sort of uh, pages here within this document, slides within this document. Some of these we'll talk about here in this tutorial, but let's return to working on this here. So now I have it where she is sort of popping out of the frame, but of course we can't see that because we only have the one photo now contained within the frame. So this now is where we're gonna have to make use of this second photo element. Now, there's gonna be a couple elements to this. We're gonna have to get the size right since we resize this photo so that it matches. Because if I just drag her over now, then of course this photo here, she's smaller in scale than she is here. So we're gonna have to match the size. That's the first problem we have. And then the other problem is we, we do wanna remove that background. Oops, sorry there, I zipped to another slide for a second. Uh, but we do wanna remove this background because we want to have it look like a element within a frame and then popping out of the frame. We're not gonna to wanna to have the background where we have her coming out of the frame. Okay, so let's start with the background uh, part first. So if you're a pro user, you know you can click on any photo, then you can come under edit photo. You can choose this background remover to knock out the background. Now, if you're a free Canva user and you wanna work around, you actually can remove the background without really leaving Canva. You can just come here, you can click on the photo. Actually, I take that I take that back. There is one step. So what you wanna do is you, you're gonna want this photo here. You're gonna bring it on a blank uh, page. You're gonna download it as a PNG or JPEG, whichever. And you have to do that because then you can use this apps here. So you know there are different apps in Canva that extend the functionality of Canva. So you can go under apps tab here. You can search for remove or background eraser and find this background eraser app. And then with that, it lets you choose a file and then it will remove the background and knock it out for you. So you do have an extra step or two, but you can get it done. Download it first as an image so you can bring it back up here. It would be nice if you could just point to it and then remove background, uh, but you can't quite do that because it wants you to upload an image. So you do have to download it so you can upload it back into Canva. Uh, but that's your step. And so then once you have the background removed, which I'll do now with this photo using the background remover, boom, we knock out the background. Now we have an element where we can try to position it over here so we can really get that pop out effect working. So how are we going to get the scale and alignment of these two images to match perfectly? This is something I see a lot of Canva users uh, struggle with a lot, but I'm gonna give you some tips so you can do a much better job with this. Uh, so sometimes when I uh, extract a, an image from a background, I pull in these crop handles just to like maybe the edge of the bag and the edge of the areas that have been cropped away, but you do need to resist that temptation uh, for this particular technique. So I'm gonna make sure I don't mess with the bounds because one of the keys to making this work and be able to line things up is the fact that even though you've removed the background, the outer bounds here, if we just click on it, you know, you click on an object to get the bounding box, the outer bounds here actually still uh, stretch to the what was the background of the image, even though we've knocked out that background. Uh, now, if we double click on this image here, we can see where the outer bounds were. Now, the problem is now that's extending beyond the screen here. So another thing you can do uh, to make this work is you wanna reposition this, even though we may end up wanting this to be in this part of the screen, uh, we may want to reposition it now, maybe even scale it down now, just so it's a little easier to work with because being able to see those outer bounds of where the document edges are, that's going to be crucial in being able to get getting these two images to line up. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to click on this one. Let's go ahead and scale it down. We can scale it back up later. Now, if I double click on it, I can see, yes, boom, boom, boom. I can see all my sides. You want to make sure when you do this process that you have at least three of the bounding edges here uh, sort of within the window that you can work with, within it, within your document edges. So in other words, you see the white document background, you wanna have at least three within here. Because the other part of this is we'll make use of Canva rulers. Now, if you don't see your rulers, you can use the Shift plus R keyboard shortcut to show or hide your rulers. So you can see when I'm tapping Shift plus R, I'm showing and hiding my rulers. Now you could also do that by coming to the file menu settings, and then you have the, uh, see your show rulers and guides option, but you see shift plus R, that is the keyboard shortcut. Now, once you have that, that allows you to just, uh, let me just clear these guides. I have a couple guides on the screen, but once you've done that, you can drag out guides 
from uh, any of the rulers. So you can drag it out, put it anywhere on screen. I could also drag out a horizontal guide from going up here. Here's another one I'll remove. But then what that allows me to do is now when I double click on this, even within this mode with my bounds, I can just drag out rulers and sort of bring them down exactly to where those bounding lines are on my document and then I can get things to line up perfectly. Now I could do all three sides, but really, uh, or all four sides, excuse me, but really you're just gonna need three sides. Uh, sometimes you can even get away with two depending on uh, certain things, but we're gonna use three to be safe here. And now I'm gonna use that to align my next image, okay? I'm gonna use that to scale and align my next image. Uh, and I'll do the fourth one here just to be very obvious. So we'll go ahead and drag out that fourth one as well. It's gonna to snap to the bottom there. And now I can click outside that. So now even though it's back in here, I can see based on these guides exactly where the bounds are for this image. Even though it's within this other frame, I can see where it actually extends to the hidden areas of the photo. And that's gonna be crucial because remember, we still have this bounding box here. Now, let me show you a trap that can uh, get some people here. If you click on a photo and you're dragging it and suddenly your cursor crosses into the frame, then suddenly that's gonna wanna snap into the frame. And of course, we don't want this to snap into the frame, we want it to sit on top of the frame. So, two ways to avoid the snapping here is the one is one is to just be careful and make sure that your cursor never crosses over top of the frame. Now with this particular image, I could do it by just grabbing out here in the white space instead of here. And that way, even though I'm positioning the corner here, you see how I'm getting my corner to match up with my guides, even though I'm doing that, uh, I'm never crossing my cursor over here. And then I can do the same thing here, scaling down from the top and then boom, once I've sort of snapped to that guides, you can see now that I pretty much exactly have those two lined up on top of each other. And that's what's gonna work for this photo pop-out effect. Now, let me real quick show you another technique here is let me just drag this. Uh, even if my cursor crosses into the frame, I could also hold down the control key. That's control on Windows. You would hold down the command key on Mac before I click this. So if I hold down control and then I left mouse click, now you notice I can move my cursor over top. And even though over top of it, it's not snapping into the frame because I have that control key held down. Now, the only thing I don't like about this control key technique, I still use it a fair amount because it is very helpful. But why, when you're doing this, it will no longer snap to the guides. So it won't snap to the frame, but it also won't snap to the guides. Uh, so the first technique I employ is just making sure my mouse cursor doesn't go over top if I can do that, because that way things will still snap to guides. It helps me align things even easier. But if I can't do that, then I have that control keyboard shortcut. Again, that's command on Mac, control on Windows to fall back on. And either of these techniques is gonna let you very easily sort of uh, resize things and match things up so we can get things perfectly matching. Now, once you've done that, of course, I can go to my position menu. Let me just group these together for a second. So I'll just group them together or even just select them both. I don't have to permanently group them if I don't want to, I could, but I can just grab them together. So then I can resize because like I said, uh, resize and position. Now these guides also might be in this way at this point. So if you need to clear your guides, you can drag them off one by one. Or you can again go under the file settings menu and find that option for clearing guides. I'm just gonna drag them off screen like that. And now I can reposition both of these. They're selected, so maybe I do want it to be here. So I could put it wherever I want to. And of course, if I click off of this, uh, but the key is now that I have the one image within the frame and the other image is matched up on top of that uh, even though it extends beyond the frame. Now the final part of this here is I do want it to look like part of her is contained within the frame. And so for this top image here, which we now have aligned up over top of her, I'm just gonna grab this bottom crop and just pull it up and then boom, we have her in there. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see that even though we use those alignment tricks, sometimes you won't get it exactly perfect. So I may have to nudge her pants here and I can see that she is just a little bit too big. So you may have to fool around ever so slightly, but I promise you having these alignment tricks, it's gonna be way easier than if you start from scratch and you don't use those guides at all. So I'm not saying you won't ever have to do some minute adjustments in here. You may still sometimes have to do minute adjustments, but you can do those uh, pretty easily and get things looking pretty good. You also, if you really, really wanna make micro adjustments with the size of something, you can have a layer selected. You can come under the range menu here. You can really come in here and select uh, your width and height and make micro adjustments or micro adjustments in positioning. So you can come in here and get things to line up. 
Okay, I'm going to call that good enough for now. And so we have things where we have it, where she really comes in uh, and you have it so she's popping out of the frame. Now, if you have a point where it's blending but not quite blending perfectly, you can actually drag your slider also and find another area where it just looks a little bit more natural. Maybe you're not noticing that seam as much. Now, obviously, I can't come up here where the bags are or I'm losing that unless I were to make a third copy of the photo, which you could even do that and have it show uh, just on the left side of the screen. But I'm going to come down here right about there and we're going to call that good. So now we have this photo pop out effect. And then, of course, you can can, once you've executed this, you can come in there and add any other design elements you want. So let me just go to a couple other versions of this here. So here I've come in here, uh, I've added some design elements. Again, here's another one where I went in here and added design elements. Uh, another image of her in the background. So you can get creative, you can play around, uh, but the one effect you're really working on here that's going to be the star effect is this frame pop-out effect where you use two versions of an image. You have one within a frame, you have another one aligned over top of it, so it really looks like your subject is popping out of the frame. And there are lots of different ways to get creative with this. So if I look at this uh, one here, here's one where I just have a splatter effect. And you can even come in here and if I drag to the beginning of this and hit my space bar, you can see that you can even bring in things like the animated elements like this. So this is just where I I've knocked her out of the uh, background, even within the frame, I've knocked her out. Then behind that, I put yet another frame. So now we're talking about a second frame that's behind the original frame. So when you have a subject with the background removed, you can still put them within a frame, but then behind them, you can have another frame uh, and you can put a video in that frame. And then I put a video outside the frame here and then we have some splatter effects. So again, lots of different ways to get creative to really take this pop out effect to the next level. And I'll just show you another couple examples here. Here's another one, just this dog popping out of the frame. And then here, another example here. So just all different ways where you can get creative and you can start to use this frame pop out effect just to really grab the viewer's attention and you can use it in a lot of fun ways, okay? Now I've added a few free resources for my Canva newsletter subscribers just to really help you lock in the ability to create these dynamic pop-outs. So the first is just going to be a PDF that has the simple to follow steps for everything in this process we talked about. So it's going to make it really easy just to have this to follow through anytime you're trying out this effect. So you can really lock in the different steps, the different things you need to do. And then the other part of this is I've shared some of the uh, files I showed you in this uh, tutorial uh, as a Canva template template link and so you can click that template link you can launch the project as your own canva project and then you can really study the different layers make sure you understand how i'm creating all these pop-out effects see the different things i'm doing to add videos and animation just to take it to the next level also using background effects other design elements and so between these two resources you can really help lock this in and this will be a skill that you master so all you have to do is follow the link below i'm going to put that link for these free resources in the description below this video and i'll also put it it in the first comment. So you just follow that, sign up for the free Canva monthly newsletter, which is also a helpful resource for anybody looking to follow Canva, and then you'll immediately get access to these freebies. All right, so thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, feel free to give it a like, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you soon.